woke up a little bit later than usual this morning, but crawled to my yoga mat and did a little Ashtanga practice. I just kind of feel into what medicine my body needs day to day and move it accordingly and connect to my breath, drop into my connection to source first thing in the morning before anything else. And this is extremely nourishing and a very big part of what I eat in a day because my cup just feels so filled up. And after I like to sit in a meditation, play with my singing bowl. speaking with the highest, deepest, truest reverence in my heart for arriving at a new day filled with light and love and truth and knowing. Thank you for guiding me here onto my mat, into my breath, into a home filled with love. Thank you for the whispers, for the omens, for all the guidance along my path that has brought me into this current embodiment. I am open, I am listening, I am receptive. With every breath may I return home to my highest truth and continue to refine my higher consciousness perspective on all things. May I breathe gratitude into every single moment, feeling the divine perfection that is before me. May I feel in every cell of my being that I am safe and I am whole and I am worthy just as I am. Sending frequencies of love, knowingness, and bliss out to all beings everywhere. Breathing in the vision of a world where we celebrate one another. May I have kind thoughts. May I learn. May I be filled with the rapture of simply being. And so it is. I'm back on my celery juice kick. I feel like I go on and off, but I always feel so good every time I'm drinking celery juice. I remove the leaves because that makes it a little less bitter, and I just chop up my celery and throw it all into a blender with a little splash of water and blend it all up. This is how you can make juice at home in a blender. Blend it up with a little bit of water, throw it in a cheesecloth, and just squeeze the sweet juice out of there and you can add a little bit of pulp as well just because it's good for you and I like to drink this on an empty stomach most mornings when I remember to and get my bare feet on the earth water my plants in my garden good morning cheers <laughs> today I'm putting on some makeup because I'm sending in a kind of audition for this casting just a self tape for this photo shoot and I need to send it in as soon as possible. It's really lovely out, but I know it's going to rain later, so I'm going to try and get outside today before the rain hits and just do some emails today. I'm speaking at this summit, which is basically a lot of top execs at CNN trying to figure out what Gen Z wants to see more of in the media, and I'm speaking on behalf of Gen Z, at least the spiritual half. There's a lot of other really cool speakers um, in the queer community and other activists that are doing really cool things. And this foundation is so light for my skin tone. I need to get on that. But I'm really excited. So today I have a meeting for that, just prepping all my gear and running through the questions and how the day will go on the day of the summit. I feel really grateful and a little nervous too, but I'm just gonna speak from my heart and what's true for me. And then I'll probably just be editing for some time. I'm gonna try to film another video while I'm filming this video where I just bike into nature. I feel like I haven't filmed too many videos of me just journeying because it's been so rainy. So I'm gonna try and run outside and do that today as well and just share some lessons I've learned along my path. I think that would be a really cute video. For breakfast this morning, I was really craving some granola, so I just mixed together oats 
flax seeds, cinnamon, and maple syrup. This was a really simple granola, but you can definitely add chia seeds, pumpkin seeds, different kind of nuts, and fruit. I just used what I had on hand and threw in some oat milk into that as well. And I like having crispy, crunchy granola, but you can use less nut milk and just make it more thin and not as clumpy. I had this with some kefir, coconut, yogurt, and some apple slices, which are another great thing to bake into your granola but this was just such a yummy breakfast i want to eat this every single day thank you so much for being here and joining me today for what i eat i already am halfway done with this granola combo this is so good wow no maybe you guys i added some cinnamon and agave on top of this on the granola to make it even sweeter and it is just so yummy i can't believe i get to eat this for breakfast I just quickly wanted to share the different ways that I have been diving deeper into really healing my relationship with my body and that's a really broad topic. There's a lot of different aspects in which we carry shame, guilt, and this smallness, this internalized smallness as I like to call it, that is a result of societal conditioning and I think a lot of it does stem from the patriarchy, does stem from capitalism, and that it's very intentional that we don't feel at home in our bodies or that we're constantly feeling like we need to change some aspects of ourselves and beyond, you know, different traumas that I've faced within my skin because of my upbringing, my background, my ethnicity. There's just a lot of programming and diet culture that is so present in our society and I am not going to pretend like I am so cleared of that. I feel like we all carry different forms of internalized misogyny and racism and I think we also can carry internalized just like beauty norms and diet culture and programming like that. I've been recently reading um, The Body Is Not An Apology by Sonia Renee Taylor. It's going deep, you guys. And I feel like for me, healing has always been something that I've gone about in a very pragmatic way where it's like, I see the problem, I see how it manifests in my life. Like, okay, smallness, I don't feel confident, I feel afraid to be myself, I feel like harming my body and self-sabotaging. And what can I do about it? Okay, I'm going to tell people and I'm going to eat intuitively and pray before every meal and breathe deeply into my tummy. And then beyond that, I'm like, let me look at the deep layers of programming that I have received and that I think is normal because maybe it's not because humans are really good at acclimating to all kinds of situations and it's really important to look at the programming that you live your life by. Our beliefs are the guiding forces of our energy and it's really good every now and then to take real inventory of what you believe about this life, about your body, about your worth, about what's possible in this world and really break down anything that doesn't feel true and resonant in your body and doesn't feel like it's actually going to serve you to the most love-filled reality. So for me, right now, I... I'm really happy to be diving into different resources that teach me the ways that we are taught body shame. But I'm at the point in my relationship to food where I'm not binge eating. It's been so long since I've had a binge eating episode, which feels so good to say. Honestly, when I was in the depth of my binge eating, I just kept telling myself, it doesn't have to be this way. I don't have to have this relationship with food. And I believed in what my experience with food could be before it was present. I believe that I could feel light and clear and excited and not stuff myself. I believe that I could treat myself well also because I haven't always struggled with binge eating. It's come in like waves or different seasons of my life and I was like you really have to sit with this right now so that you never struggle with it again. Like it got really really bad as I've mentioned in a few past videos um, during quarantine and my orthorexia got really bad. I had gained 10 pounds and then I lost 10 pounds in literally two weeks, which is just so unhealthy and unsustainable. And then I started binge eating again and gained it all back. Really most intense period of binge eating that I've ever had. And I knew the whole time that I really needed to sit with myself and look at why this was taking place so that I could dismantle it for good and dismantle all the thought processes that came with it. Um, and now I'm just like, okay, I'm stable. I'm feeling really good with food. I feel really grateful that I have access to create most of my meals at home because that has been really helpful. Just cooking for myself. I know what's going into it. I'm filling it with love and intention. My body's just getting excited to eat. And 
It makes it so much more of a ritual, which feels so, so good. And now just absorbing more positive media and positive, you know, narratives around body love is just so wonderful. And I'm going to have all the different meals in the timeline below if you just literally want to see the recipes that I'm making. But I always like to really share where I'm at with my body issues because we all have a body and we all have different stories that come up when we look in the mirror and I think it's really helpful just to share where we're at. Radical self-love invites us to love our bodies in a way that transforms how we understand and accept the bodies of others and it makes me want to be so unapologetic and makes me so excited to step into the fullness of all that I am and knowing that that is helping to liberate all the women that came before me and the women who will come after me in my ancestry and also just in my community. Every single time I see someone showing up so unapologetically in their personality, in their body, I'm just like, I feel like I exhale, I feel relieved, I feel so excited and reminded of how much space I'm allowed to take up. Even just upstairs I was talking to some of my roommates about how we have these big beds in our rooms for some reason, like I have a king size bed which I never had and I still sleep in the corner and one of our other roommates was saying that he likes to sleep right in the middle and my friend was like, I'm allowed to take up that much space, like I don't feel comfortable taking up that much space just being in the middle of this bed, I always choose a tiny little corner and it's just like wow, oh yeah, we don't have to be small in any way and there actually isn't anything inherently wrong about us, which that was my biggest self-limiting belief for most of my life, that there's inherently something wrong with me or something that I am doing wrong because of the domestic abuse that I experienced and the ways that I felt like I wasn't intentionally brought into this world or just feeling like my parents don't have money for me, they can't really take care of me, they don't look after me, they don't really care about me or my whereabouts and it's just like it would just be easier for them if I didn't exist which was a belief that I carried from a very young age especially experiencing and seeing you know abuse happen it's just like it would just be easier if I didn't exist because I am a burden in all of these ways and that was the self-limiting belief that kind of guided a lot of my behaviors in relationships and exchanges with men and friendships like I am always the wrong one and things that I say are less valid and you know ugh, all of this shrinking and smallness which I have felt so aware of how I have disempowered myself and how I would feel my voice just just run away from me when I was in you know a situation with men or people that I found to be intimidating and I've been slowly calling and pulling that voice back into myself and that's what it feels like to me to step into my womanhood. I started bleeding really young, I started having intimacy really young and I've gone through all these different things in my life that have made me a woman, whatever that means, but really loving myself as I am, that is what stepping into my womanhood feels like, is claiming all that I am. It's going deep. I'm not too far into it so I can't speak to the ways I'll be integrating these learnings but it just feels really good to have the facts and also really talk about the intersectionalities yeah <laughs> so that's what's going on in my mind this morning I feel really excited and empowered about the fact that anything that's not in resonance we have the ability to change any way that we're living our lives the way that we may notice that we treat others or judge others any areas of lack or fear it's like actually there's space to change absolutely everything and all we have to do first is simply change our minds that's amazing mm -hmm. i really love eating sitting like this i'm sitting on a little foam yoga block from upstairs i normally really like cork blocks i just love sitting in a meditative posture with my hips above my knees and really just opening up my tummy and womb space so I can breathe deeply into my stomach when I eat and I'm not all contracted like this. It's like really <sighs> breathing into my diaphragm, opening up the space so my digestion can take place with ease and so I can help my body out a little bit. And I don't know, sitting in a meditative posture just always reminds me to be mindful as you would assume <laughs> for lunch i made one of my all-time favorite simple raw vegan meals i shredded up carrot cucumber cabbage 
threw in some sea dolls into their kimchi and kelp noodles. However, I actually steam my kelp noodles because that makes them a little bit softer. And I just threw on this dressing that's a mix of coconut aminos, tahini, lemon, and sriracha, and a little bit of garlic and onion powder. It's my favorite tahini sauce. I put it on everything and I just mix that all up. This is so good and so simple and you don't need to use kelp noodles, but it's so fun shredding vegetables and adding that to a noodle bowl. And I also just put some fresh basil on top and this has been one of my favorite go-to meals lately. I just wanted to share one of the easiest life hacks for better digestion is really tuning in with how your body feels after you eat. I feel like it's going to be so unique for everyone what digests well and what doesn't. So really sit with yourself and tune into how your body feels when you're eating and after. Use your body as your guide. And also generally, if you struggle with floating as a vegan, it's really helpful to eat more raw foods and fruits in the morning and then eat your cooked foods later because that food combining can make you bloated as well as those foods digest at different speeds. I don't really struggle with bloating anymore. I feel like because I have gone through so many trials and tribulations of figuring out what works for my body the past five years on a vegan diet. I was really craving miso vegetables, so I made this miso nourish bowl, and I'll link the original recipe down below, but to marinate the tofu in, I put together in a bowl ginger powder, garlic powder, onion powder, allspice, cinnamon, and chili powder, and then mixed everything together with some soy sauce, and then I cut up my tofu into cubes, and this is so satisfying to watch. I had so much fun watching this tofu get cut but basically you're just going to marinate your tofu in this sauce for about an hour and for the vegetables i sauteed these in a miso sauce with miso paste rice vinegar soy sauce agave allspice a little bit of garlic and onion powder and some sesame oil as well mix that all up and then toss it with my chopped up veggies i have red onions carrots broccoli and japanese sweet potato let me tell you you just have to try this these were so delicious and crispy and flavorful 10 out of 10 would recommend if you like eating veggies I also made some quinoa on the side and then got to roasting my tofu I love using sesame oil just because of the flavor that it brings out but I roasted my tofu until it got nice and crispy massaged some kale with some lemon and put in my quinoa and the roasted veggies as well as the tofu this recipe has rice vinegar miso paste sesame oil oil, ginger, garlic, and onion powder, of course, just because I put that on everything, and a little bit of water. I think I splashed a little bit of agave in there as well and just mixed it all up and poured that onto my bowl. This was such a delicious combo, and I felt so nourished after on every level of my being. It was really flavorful, and I feel like a lot of these bowls can just feel like healthy veggies, but this one felt like I was eating a treat, just something special, and I just ate it upstairs while the girls were also prepping dinner and we decided to have a movie night. Well, I think if I just get like the Really? Well, somebody told Sorry. me I'm on a movie earlier. Did it go back? That's right. Yeah, like... they're... Hmm. It's the angels. So in a world concerned with carbon and climate change, protecting these animals and protecting the entire planet. It's 9.15 p.m. and I'm so exhausted. I have a face mask on, but I'm going to wash this off and get to bed because I'm really excited to practice yoga early in the morning tomorrow and it's seriously so motivating. I get so excited every night knowing that I get to land on my mat in the morning and the girls are still watching the movie upstairs but I just needed to get some sleep. We were watching Sea Spiracy for anyone curious. It's really, really good. And thank you so much for joining me and taking a peek into my life. And if you try out any of these recipes, please tag me on Instagram at Yanomi underscore Hitomi. I love to see what you're nourishing yourselves with. 
and I hope that you can take some deep breaths after watching this video and integrate anything that came up for you throughout this video or any intuitions or messages that really resonated with you. Write them in your journal and really take steps toward listening and honoring your intuition. Thank you so much for being here and witnessing my journey. It's a freaking honor and I cherish you and I'll see you in the video soon.